We've already looked at the old Sugarman place, and the next logical episode of Bojack to look at is episode 11 from season four, which is called Time's Arrow. In the old Sugarman place, we got to see a lot about this idea of generational trauma, and you can see how problems with forming safe attachments from a young age can essentially be passed down through the generations, affecting the personality of that person as they grow up. Time's Arrow is fascinating because it takes a good detailed look at dementia and how that can affect someone's perceptions of their past, their present and their future. Let's crack on. Slow down, Henrietta. A lady mustn't rush. It's unbecoming. I am not Henrietta. I'm your son. My son is a ball of gas. Yes, your son, Bojack. I'm him. I'm the ball of gas. But you're also a star. Wait. Mom, do you remember? Shh, Henrietta, I am talking to the sun. Sun, you're a ball of gas, but you're also a star. We call you sun. Problems recognizing people is really common in Alzheimer's. There is a phenomenon that's called prosopragnosia. That's a big fancy way of saying that you can't actually recognize people's faces. In this case, Henrietta is probably somebody from her past, pre-Bojack. And if she feels that that's the time period in which she's living right now, then that's probably why she's confusing people. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are. So that's here. kind of the, yes. the difficulty recognizing faces again. The prosopagnosia. So it's kind of like this blank slate, really, where she's confusing time periods where there was a little bit of her in the present, her there as an adult, and now her there as a kid. Again, very common in Alzheimer's, where people's perception of what time period they're living in can often jump around quite a lot and be very, very muddled. Even your lungs expostulate as they struggle to expel your ample corpulence. She's saying your lungs think you're fat, too. Father says I'm just growing. If it's a bit of a theme not, about body image be with her, isn't it? physically impede your egress. <laughs> Oh, ow, ow, you're hurting me. <laughs> Beatrice, stop reading and put on your uniform. Father, I don't feel well. <coughs> I don't care if you're scared of Camellia Bloodsworth and her gaggle. You have to go to school. Now stop making books your friends. Reading does nothing for young women but build their brains, taking valuable resources away from their breasts and hips. But my throat hurts. Uniform, now. <laughs> Throat hurting is not a common manifestation of psychological distress. Tummy aches are. Children don't all have some sort of united meeting and say, you know what, if we don't want to go to school because we're feeling stressed or we're being bullied, we're all going to use the party line if we've got a tummy ache. It's not malingering. It's not making it up. These kids really do actually have a tummy ache, but it's what we call somatization. It's psychological distress manifesting with physical symptoms. In that case, kind of vague abdominal pain. Sore throat isn't usually something that would manifest in that way. It's a mother's duty to keep her children alive, and you are continually failing. How could you not have known she has scarlet fever? That explains Say it. Say something, damn it! What has become of you? I swear, if I'd known this is how you'd behave once we severed the connections to your prefrontal cortex, I'd hardly have bothered. Remember in the old Sugarman place, we saw that he had honey lobotomized, and lobotomies were done pretty much for catch all anything to do with what was deemed a psychiatric illness at the time where they would sever the connections between a structure in the frontal lobe called the orbitofrontal cortex and all the tracks that then go through another structure called the thalamus that then directs communication throughout all different parts of the brain it was designed to dampen down impulsivity which was often deemed to be why somebody sort of manifested distress and kind of calm people but to the point really it took away people's personality it's very difficult to make decisions when you have no functioning frontal lobe. Doctor says your throat is nearly swollen shut. So perhaps you'll finally lose some of that weight that's given you such troubles. Won't that be nice? Yes, father. He's a child. It's such a common theme so far, isn't it, in Bojack, where it's all centered around weight. We saw in, I think, I can't remember what the name of the episode was now, where Beatrice, didn't she spike Hollyhawk with like an amphetamine or something or some sort of weight loss supplement, constantly making comments about her weight. You can see how that becomes a focal point around somebody's low self-esteem. <laughs> You know, I sent you to Barnard to get your MRS from a fine upstanding Columbia man. But instead of a bachelor, you returned home with a bachelor's degree and a mouthful of sass. What a waste. <sighs> So we're jumping forward now to when she's gone to college, usually a time that you're striving out for independence and you're kind of seeking out who you are as an individual. And then you kind of come home and get berated by your dad based on outdated gender roles. Scotch on the rock. Nice drink. 
Do that I little know distortion you? is interesting. <laughs> nope, just crashing some dumb debutante's party. <laughs> Merging of memories, oh, I suppose. Do you mean for dumb to describe the party or the debutante? Because I might agree with you or I might be offended. You're the dumb debutante, are you? A lot of people with dementia get confused as to the chronology of events that have happened in their life. What happened first, then what happened after that, then what happened after that, and they can kind of mesh together a little bit. And so somebody's story, when they're giving it to you, it could kind of jump around quite a lot in a way that seems very confusing. But that's how they remember it. I'd encourage anybody that if there's moments in this episode where you go, hang on, what, why, why have we gone from that to that? And why are we jumping around here? Then kind of reflect on what that must be like to be living in that sort of mind for somebody with dementia. Because it might explain a lot about how they behave and what they say. Ah, looks like you pegged me as well as I pegged you. What must your mother think of you? Oh, she doesn't think much about anything anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did she pass? No. Not exactly. We saw in the old Sugarman place how she lost her brother in the war. Then she's kind of lost her mum essentially through the lobotomy. At least lost her personality and lost the affection and the warmth and the relationship she once had with her. So now really all she's left with is an abusive father. And I imagine looking now for a partner who is the polar opposite of her dad to kind of represent some sort of escape from the environment with which she's left in. Mine did. I'm very sorry to hear that. I was little. I don't remember really. But she had a diamond just like yours. I saw it in a picture once. Hmm. Yes, this is my mother. What? I'd like to leave her here. Can I pay for the next five years in a lump sum now so I don't have to think about her again? So there we've got a glimmer of Beatrice being aware of what's happening around her while she's living with dementia. So don't ever assume that people that have got dementia don't really understand what's going on and are not taking anything in from what's happening around them. But again, her present is getting mixed up with memories of the past and the people are getting muddled. In this case, the males in her life are all getting muddled with one another. Hopefully you're starting to see why actually just the notion of living with dementia can lead to these very short-term periods of real severe distress for that individual as they're just trying to make sense of what is happening in life around them at any one point in time. It's so confusing. Are you certain it's mine? Well, whose else could it be? What do you want to do? Uh, maybe you have a cousin who has a, a, a friend who knows a doctor who can take care of such inconveniences. I'm, I'm happy to do the gentlemanly thing and, and pay for the cab fare. No, I can't. Well, that doesn't leave us with very many options. The doll probably represents the baby. She can't get rid of it. And that inevitably will also feed into one of the previous episodes where we've seen Bojack throwing the, the sort of the toy baby doll off the balcony and how distressed that made Beatrice. Again, these are all memories that are getting merged together. <coughs> come on, come on, come on. The baby's hungry. I try. Has a he name. I don't know what he wants. Well, can you figure it out? If I don't sleep, how can I work to support you and the child, let alone have energy left over to write? Maybe if anyone wanted to pay you for anything you wrote, we'd be able to afford a nanny and a maid. So the side effect of her going for a bloke that is the polar opposite of her dad in terms of personality is that they've now got the polar opposite in terms of lifestyle. I burnt dinner Hi. again, but you can pick at the charred remains and delight me God. and your simple son with stories of your noble soul of the earth co-workers like eight finger joe and sports team steve oh. before locking yourself in your study for the night you know to what? chip away at your never ending goddamn novel oh. i'll clean up the kitchen and bathe our filthy child and, just... and we'll just keep waltzing through this what? goddamn what you... proletariat no. dream so much resentment and that's a horrible environment for a kid to grow up in the people that are meant to keep you safe are constantly bickering and inconsistent in their responses to you. And then I mean, it just causes chaos, really, for you. Beatrice seems to be wanting now to be looked after, to have a financial income from the male in the household that kind of ends up uh, giving her the same lifestyle that she was accustomed to growing up. So she was initially trying to escape her father. And now she kind of wants her father back, who was always there to supply the lifestyle that she wanted, even if it meant the abuse that came with it. No, yeah, there we go. So we're sort of rebuilding the lifestyle that she grew up with. So this is replaying her early life now that she's an adult. So that early life now is what Bojack is experiencing at the same age that she did. Henrietta, will you help me pack this? I want to bring it to my son. That's Henrietta the maid. Jesus, what is that ghastly thing? It belonged to father. 
I'm giving it to Bojack. I never cared for the aesthetic arts. Dulls the senses. Art should be straightforward and utilitarian, like my novel. These little distortions are suggesting maybe there's some cracks or gaps in the memory, and that maybe even it's a distorted version of events. We see it with people that have experienced a traumatic episode at some point that kind of feeds into the anxiety and depression associated with things like PTSD, that all the emotions can end up amplifying some aspects of events, diminishing others, and you end up remembering a distorted version of events that isn't entirely accurate compared to what actually happened. I don't know why you don't just get a divorce already. There we go, oh, jumping sure, around again. That's the Hollywood way. We're out of mustard. Let's get a divorce. I'm a little sad. Divorce. We've grown apart over the years, and our and holding a piece of her dad the with the photo, no or painting, whatever it is. Together. Divorce. That actually is a legitimate reason to get a divorce. Well, who else would have me now after what you did to my body? What I did. Anyway, do you want this painting? It belonged to your grandfather, a man who knew what marriage meant. Interestingly, now she's going back and idolizing her dad. So she's looking back at this with rose-tinted glasses. Alzheimer's is a neurodegenerative disease. We don't completely know what the cause is. We know there's some genetic associations. We know there's some environmental causes. So we know the cardiovascular system is important. We know that previous head injuries, there's some suggestion about levels of early life education having an influence, but we don't really know who's going to get it and who isn't. But the longer you live, the more likely you are. Now, Alzheimer's is the main type of dementia lots of different types. The first part of the brain that tends to get affected is an area called the hippocampus. It's in the medial part of a structure in the brain called the temporal lobe. And the hippocampus is responsible for taking our short-term memories and laying them down as long-term memories where we then retain them. So it becomes very, very difficult to then lay down new memories. But then we also, as it degenerates, lose recent memories from our past. So it's not just about laying down new memories, it's also losing memories that are already established from our past. The most recent memories are the ones that are most vulnerable to being lost, but then people usually can remember early life stuff quite well, and that's what can lead people to almost feel like that they're reliving their early life again, because that's the bit they can remember. How long are you sticking around for, Mom? <sighs> just pour me a drink and I'll be on my way. Yeah, let's get you good and liquored up before you drive back up the coast. I got a date with Tanya Harding tonight. Sugar and lemon, wasn't that the treat that she was allowed as a kid? Again, now that's permeating through into other memories. It's just a bunch of silly stories. Some people like silly stories. A lot of good they ever did me. It's not Ibsen, but... Uh... It would only depress me to watch you bumble around like that. All the sacrifices I made so that you could do this. Her father, all the sacrifices he made to help her go to uni, where she's only gone and got an education, all the sacrifices she's made, and all he's done is go on to, you know, back in the 90s being a very famous TV show. <laughs> that was pretty intense. So we saw her mum and her lobotomy. We saw her giving birth to Bojack. We saw her cuddly toy being burnt in a fire. These are all things that have been really prominent influences in her life and the way that she's developed and the way that she then sort of cares for Bojack and the way his attachments have formed. And they kind of just merge together in a really quite intense little montage there, all with this sort of fire and brimstone theme that yeah, must be pretty distressing, actually, for the person experiencing it. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> uh, uh, Beatrice. What? I, uh, <clears throat> I gummed things up, uh... <laughs> oh? It's Henrietta. The girl went and got herself pregnant. Oh, she got herself pregnant. Mm. Can you talk to her? Just woman That's a pretty woman. solo action. She wants to have the baby. I can't talk her out of it. What do you want me to say? I'm out of options, B. You think I enjoy groveling to my own wife, hat in hand? If you weren't so neglectful in your wifely duties... Don't you dare. I'm sorry, what do you... I don't know what to do. I, please, just fix this for me, please. Interesting to see what Beatrice does. She was very adamant about holding on to Bojack, but then she seems to have grown to resent Bojack and the impact that it's had on her marriage and lifestyle and everything else like that. So it's going to be interesting to see what advice she gives to Henrietta and her motivations for it. You're fired, of course. Makes sense. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Horseman. He was just so kind to me and I felt so... Let me guess. He said you reminded him of his dead mother. He said she had hair like mine. He saw it in a picture once. <sighs> So he's picking a partner based on his mum and his tight attachment with his mum and almost wanting to have a partner who reminds him of his mum. Whereas Beatrice wanted initially a partner that was the polar opposite of her dad, but then has ended up turning him into her dad. This is all a bit Oedipus complex. Don't do that. What does that solve? I don't know what else to do. Managing emotions, being a human and therapeutic. Right. We'll pay for your tuition. <laughs> really? Yes. You got to get rid of the baby? And you'll give the baby up for adoption. 
No. You think you want this, but you don't. Not like this. Mrs. Horst. Don't throw away your dreams for this child. Don't let that man poison your life the way he did mine. You are going to finish your schooling and become a nurse. You'll meet a man, a good man, and you'll have a family. But please believe me, you don't want this. <sighs> please, Henrietta. You have to believe me. Please don't do what I did. Are you convinced? I don't know if I'm convinced. On one hand, you could look at this on a superficial level and say, is she trying to protect Henrietta from making the mistakes that she deemed herself to have made, i.e. having a baby and having Bojack, which she clearly regrets? Unconsciously, though, it could be a way of punishing her for sleeping with her husband and getting pregnant from her husband to give birth to the baby and then to give it away almost in the same way that she had her cuddly toy and then it was taken away from her and burnt. Yeah, I'm not so convinced that motivations are purely good here. This is interesting, they're mishmashing everything together again. So she's with Henrietta at the birth at the same time as she's having the birth of Bojack. Where's my baby? Where's my baby? That's where the toy's taken away. Oh, you did it, Henrietta. Yeah, I'm still don't really believe that the motivation is all good and there isn't this element of once the baby's taken away see that's how i felt when my doll was taken away and burnt oh no oh, no please please don't stop stop why are you doing this <sighs> beatrice remember what we say about crying mm -hmm. crying is stupid but father tell them not to burn my things but darling they have to your sickness has infected everything the scarlet fever is over we it's a bacterial infection. No, you'll get attached. Wait. It all must well, she's be already attached. For your own good. I need to hold her. This is for your own good. But not my baby. Yes, especially your baby. <gasps> See, doesn't yep. that feel better? No! Oh, my baby. Wait, please. I need to hold her. No, no. Wait, no. Please come back. I need to hold her. Please. There's something different about having had something that you formed an attachment to that's then been taken away compared to something that you've never had at all. Come on now, be strong. You can't let your womanly emotions consume you. You don't want to end up like your mother now, do you? Ironically, who can't really feel any emotions because she's lobotomized. I promise, one day this will all be a pleasant memory. Very clever. That hits you a bit, didn't it? Bojack? Mom? But Bojack? Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Well, uh, what is this place? This is where you live now. No. Is it? No. Mom. Where are we, Bojack? I just told you. I don't understand. Where, where am I? You're... Frightened. In Michigan. Michigan? Yeah. At the lake house. I am? It's a it's a warm summer night, and the fireflies are dancing in the sky, and your whole family is here, and they're telling you that everything is going to be all right. Yes, that's right. What else? The crickets are, are chirping, and the lake is still, and the night is full of stars. I can see it. It's so clear. W what are we doing here, Bojack? We're sitting on the back porch, and we're listening to your brother play the piano, and we're eating ice cream. Vanilla ice cream. Yes, that's right. Oh, it's all so marvelous. Can you taste the ice cream, Mom? Oh, Bojack, it's so delicious. There was an opportunity there for him to almost pass some of that abuse back to his mum as punishment and revenge for what she's done to him. For somebody that isn't very emotionally mature, he took the high road. If you liked that episode, then do let me know in the comments below and do suggest any others that you want me to look at. If you also liked it, then do check out the other episodes of Bojack that I've done. They'll be floating around somewhere here and I will see you for another video very, very soon. Bye.